guys and welcome back to the folklore hiking stick workshop um it's a sunday morning i haven't done a wild camp in a little while and i'm beginning to feel like i need to get out and do one but it just could not happen this weekend because quite simply yesterday the surf was absolutely on fire if you followed this channel you know i'm an avid surfer and that had to happen but it's sunday morning and i'm catching up with some jobs um, I pre-sanded some hiking sticks to where I want them. I'm just putting the copper tips on and from there I can then start moving into the more um, specialised work. These are custom orders. Now that one up there uh, I th is going to be a mermaid one, adult themed, with um, a candy cane, uh, purple, violet and pink uh, candy cane stripes going along it. And the other one's going to be of a blue colour, but it's going to have a pirate theme. Yet again, adult. And the other one's uh, that deer antler I showed you. I've got to attach that and start getting on with that job. Um, I'm in the workshop and I've brought you with me because quite simply, I'm just going to let you have a little bit of a look at me doing um, the deer antler one. Uh, drilling it out, making the peg and attaching it. So it's sunday morning i've got i want to get out later on so i've got to make this happen so let's crack on with it they're all pre-shaped and everything's ready to go so all i'm going to do is just give it a quick spray of polyurethane um, varnish and that will help lubricate the copper tube as it slides down over the wood and obviously it will give it some protection against water ingress and any environmental damage to the tip but i've been very careful as i um hit it on i did miss there but what you're trying to do is get a straight you don't want it to go on at an angle otherwise it will really really be hard to do anything about it it will basically just cut into the wood and carry on driving in at an angle and it would look kind of odd on the hiking stick as it wouldn't be flush So I've got a uh, sharp knife there and it's got one of the blades which is like a half moon which is kind of perfect to score off any burrs and just clean up and uh, make it look a little bit more presentable where the copper tube actually joins the actual shaft of the hiking stick and it just makes it look more, more proper and more professional. So what I've got to do now, the copper tip is all pre-made and I've got a countersinked hole ready for me to put the tack in. I've got a piece of wood there in the vise so I don't damage the copper because copper is soft. So you have to be a little bit careful. It's not the hardest metal in the world. So it requires you to have a little bit of, um, well, a little bit of care and afterthought. Out of interest, this hiking stick has got some nice um, spalting marks on the inside. And that's where you kind of get very early stages of, um, well, I suppose decay and possibly um, uh, fungal or, or basically um, bacterial um, markings within the wood. And you get these nice black lines. The wood is in is in you know no way compromised. This is the very early stages, but it will leave some really nice markings within the wood. I don't know if it will come out on camera. You can just see some black wavy lines. So I've moved straight on to the deer antler now and uh, I'm going to prep it to go into the vise and that means putting rubbers um, or plastic sleeves around it so the vise when it grips hold of it so I can drill it doesn't mark it or actually crush in the actual side walls of the actual antler. So you still have to be quite careful with antler even though it is quite a, a tough substance. Thank you. 
Next, it's for me to check that it is actually flush because this is where I actually want to make sure all the surfaces marry up and meet each other. And I've done this to the hiking stick shaft and I'm just double checking to make sure it's definitely flush on the actual antler base. And now I'll start drilling out the hole. Now I'm going to try and uh, get as the, the softest bit of the pit, which is in the centre out and get the most of it as I can out. It does go down quite uh, quite easily to drill bit, but you have to be careful it doesn't wander off and start going into the side drills. So I've drilled the hiking stick hole out and it's at a predetermined depth which gives me enough depth that the metal rod and epoxy won't push out either the side wall of the antler or push out through the wall of the wood hiking stick itself. And you can see I've got a fair bit of rod which is going to go down into the shaft and also up into the antler. So I'm just cleaning up the rod so it's got no grease, oils or rust or anything on it. So I've got a good bond with the epoxy to the threaded bar. Now I'm cutting it to um, the size that I need. And I'm using an angle grinder for that. But what I'm also going to do is put some bigger notches in the bar. And that will allow the epoxy to fill those um, notches and give a better grip or hold onto the metal threaded rod. Now I'm actually mixing up my two part epoxy and you can see I've got a skirt around the shaft of the hiking stick because I'm actually going to do the top and the shaft and put the rod in and do it in one hit. Usually I'll do the antler, sink the rod in and epoxy it, then come back the next day and then epoxy it into the actual shaft of the hiking stick. But what I'm going to do this time, and I have done this before, is actually do it in one hit. But the problem with this is it does create a little bit more mess because you have two, two um, areas that the overflow of um, epoxy will come from. That is the top, the antler, and obviously the hiking stick at the bottom. Now I'm going to push it in and you can just see on that bar where I've scored it and made notches. And that just allows the epoxy to bite harder because the threads on that uh, threaded bar, I, I have seen these bars come out before. So um, this is just one little trick of the trade that I've developed, which helps ensure that doesn't happen. And I'm beginning to load it all up with the epoxy. And as I've said, I'm fully prepared, as you can see, for any excess uh, spillages. So I don't get it everywhere. I'm now working it into the antler and I'm pouring it in slowly because you do not want to cause air pockets. You want to get as much as you can in without causing air pockets, which will blow back at you as you push it on, which will act almost like a um, like a compressed compressed air pushing um, water out of a, a cylinder. What will happen is it will literally force its way out every uh, crack under pressure and spur everywhere so it's just about trying to be clean and obviously it gives a better bond if you've got no air bubbles inside the actual chamber of the antler and also the hiking stick 
Now I'm just putting the final touches to the antler. I'm going to put this down, just put a bit around the actual uh, seating surface and now I'm going to marry it all up. You can make a wooden peg out of the hiking stick as well and that's my chosen method but I do use a uh, threaded bar on occasion. This is a viable method and it's quite recognised. In fact, quite a lot, lot of manufacturers will use a threaded bar method solely. But as you can see, all that air and excess resin has been pushed out. And what I'm doing here now is scraping it all off. I can see here how flush the actual surface is now. And I'm just tweaking it, lifting it either left or right, up or down. And now I'm just holding it, waiting for it to go off. Well, now that one there has got the uh, antler on top of it, it's just a question of letting it, uh, well, dry off. I could possibly let this one go almost two days. Um, I have done before. Seems to work. I know it says, you know, within a few hours it's uh, dry. But um, with epoxy and resins, and I've had a fair bit of experience with those, because... I have made surfboards before. Uh, in behind that one, there I've got one left that I made many years ago, a red one. Um, but um, so you know, and with resin, the longer you can leave it, the better. But getting back to hiking sticks, um, I'm about to wood burn these two and uh, put some music on and just chill out while I do that. Um, we're not going anywhere. The weather's really come in. Yeah. Um, yeah, the weather really has deteriorated quite fast, so it's all misty, murky, rainy, so I might as well use the time in the workshop. And as you can see, I did get all the hiking sticks racked and sorted, and that is one pretty impressive bundle of sticks, if I, if I do say so myself. Hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds there stacked. And with the tumble dryer going, the cat loves uh, sleeping up there with all the warmth and hot air coming from it. But um, yeah, I've still to do a bit more tidying out here. But I'm about to put some music on and get on and do this wood burning. I might as well do something productive today. It will free up one more day for uh, me to do something I want to do during the, during the week. This is where I store all my completed uh, sticks there and um, they're out of the way and they don't get damaged. And you can see I've got the contrast between some varnished ones out on the outside and some oiled ones on the inside there. Well guys, I've actually got all the burnt on artwork done and I've sprayed them. Um, Obviously there's masking tape hiding the designs underneath and once they're fully uh, dried off I'll have to sand off paint to blend it all in and make it look like the paint flows into the wood and designs. So even though look, paint work's done on them now and you can see this is going to be the candy cane model one. There is a wrap of um, tape all the way down through. And uh, there's artwork and stencils and everything on it. So all that's got to come off and like I said be sanded. This one here is uh, obviously blue as requested. But it's actually got designs up here. Which I'll have to peel off all the masking tape and blend it in again. So yeah I'm pleased with that. I've got I've broke the back of the work on these hiking sticks. So it's dark outside and my lighting isn't the best in here but you can see if you look down through obviously I've got to take all this off and I think you might just be able to pick up some of the, the artwork as in the stencils I've done on the handle over there. Um, they'll all be peeled off and it will leave the wood underneath. If I bring you down to the shaft you can see the wrap that's going around it that will peel off and you'll get the bare wood leaving the paint on the outside and that will give the spiral effect and you can see on the blue one all the pirate artwork is underneath that so once I take that off I'll just blend it in with some sandpaper but um, yeah 
I'm glad I broke the back of this because um, they'd be nice when they're finished. But it's only half the job. And once I've actually you know, sanded it all back and got it looking back the way I want it, I've then got to varnish it. Because it's paint, I can't oil it. I've got to varnish it. You're probably thinking, why did I put the effort into sanding it if I'm painting over the top? Well, there's still going to be, uh, uh, you know, large patches of wood on display. So it has to be, it has to look right. So uh, hence, you know, you've got to put the effort in. But yeah. God, I'm glad I've uh, broke the back of that now. I would love to have got onto the wood burning on this one, but I just do not want to touch it. I mean, as I always say, a lot of people I know where crafting and doing this sort of thing, um, they have their mess ups, is that they keep playing around and fiddling. Do something, let it go, walk away and come back another day. Paint will dry, glue will dry, uh, resin will dry, um, you know, and you've got a fresh set of eyes and a fresh, fresh mind on the job. Just walk away and come back another, another time. Well, my wife's brought me in a cup of coffee, but I'm just packing up now and I'm finishing for the day. So that was my Sunday, basically, in this workshop. But what that has done, because these have been the most technically time consuming and difficult uh, to do, I've broke the back of it, like I've just said, um, they're done. It's just for me to do basically the finishing up before I actually put the finishing coats on. So I'm pleased about that. And then for me, I'm getting back into my more traditional hiking sticks and um, I'll do a small batch. Hopefully get them ready for a craft fair this Saturday to go with the ones I've already got um, ready to go to the craft fair. So... Yeah, all that's left for me to say is thanks for coming along. I'm going to now put my efforts video in um, to the harvest and going out wild camping, out and about in the forests. And a little a little surprise one I'm going to throw in regarding witches, folklore and a bit of truth in all of that as well. So that's all coming. That's all still to come up. And hopefully I'll get some of that. Well, I will get some of that uh, filmed and out uh, published this coming week so yeah this is andy from the folklore hiking stick workshop take care stay safe and i hope to catch you guys out on the trail well as i've just tidied up here and i'm closing the workshop down i did actually forget my evening isn't finished i'm going in for a haircut to make myself look presentable i'm beginning to uh, follow my uh, camping uh, motto of hobo kind of camping i'm beginning to look like a hobo so it's time to shave shower do my hair have a haircut and start making myself look a little bit more like um, a civilized person but in any case take care stay safe